Welcome back, guys. I'm here with Mark and Parker. How are you guys doing? Pretty good. Yourself? Good. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I had a cup of coffee. I like slept until like 11.20. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> it's really nice. It was actually super good, but I usually don't sleep in. I usually have like an 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. That's rough. So we're going to jump into the first topic, which is BGSU recap. So we're going to talk about Friday night, go into Saturday night, talk about stuff like that. So obviously Friday night, you guys, 3-2 OT loss, which was always rough because that's the first loss you guys had since Lake State in January 19th. But I mean, sometimes that's, you need those for adversity, kind of show the younger guys. And you guys definitely stormed back on Saturday night. But what were your overall thoughts for Friday night's game? What did you guys do well? What do you guys think you need more improvement on? Uh, first, uh, first of all, I think our start was was really good. I think the the first 15, 15, 17 minutes, um, I think it was one of the best uh, first periods we had. And then, unfortunately, we gave them um, that goal right before before the the intermission. I think um, in all of the sports, it's it's a momentum changer. Um, they only you know, score in the one last minutes or in the first minutes of a new period. So um, we kind of the momentum kind of shifted to to BG, uh, but you got to give them credit the way they came out in the second period. Um, I think they played, um, you know, really, um, really, uh, really hard on us and really affected, which led to the second goal um, right away too. Um, yeah, I think it was a good game overall, though. It was a really good test for us. What do you think of Parker? Um, yeah, I think Mark, um, you know, mentioned most of the points. I mean, uh, Bowling Green's obviously a really good team and, and, and one of the best in our league, and, and they're well coached. So, uh, we knew it was going to be a battle, and uh, you know I think in the first period we had a lot of chances to to make the game three three nothing and and go ahead there and maybe have the chance to put it away. But uh, you know, including myself, we didn't take advantage of some of those chances and then uh, you know let them back in the game. But um, like you mentioned earlier, I think uh, it's it's good for our team to to learn from it. And uh, you know, obviously we showed on Saturday that um, you know came back out and, and got the win so so you guys have been we've been talking about this a lot as a subject in the podcast kind of like your power play and even against Alabama your five on five was way better than your five on three what do you guys think why are you guys struggling with it and maybe why is your five on five a little bit more powerful because a lot of people would think the power plays is going to be one of the hard hitting strengths so what do you guys think as like the one of the leaderships <laughs> um it's it's tough um I think obviously if if we uh, we know what we're doing wrong, I think we could change that right away yeah. and be successful. But I think it's it's a lot of things. First of all, um, I think they they Bowling Green they play really hard on the um, on the penalty kill too. So was, we we knew uh, what to expect. I think we should have done a, a better job, especially on Friday. But um, it's uh, it's just when guys are not on the same page when. Um, somebody's trying to do something. The other guy didn't really know, doesn't really know where to go. Um, and then obviously it affects the rest of the group too. Um, usually when we're successful, it's when when all five guys are on the same page and everybody knows what's uh, what's going on. I think um, yeah, it kind of kicked us in the butt on uh, on Friday. But uh, I think we bounced back pretty good on the power play on Saturday. Yeah. What are you thinking, Parker? Yeah, I mean. Um I, I kind of feel the same way about it. Um, you know, the five on three is always, it's always a, a kind of a hard thing to work on and you need every single piece on that five on three to really work in sync. And, um, you know, this year to our five on three, we have a couple new pieces that, uh, you know, we might still have to get acclimated to each other and, and figure out, you know, the right timing. But I think, um, you know, over these past couple weekends, we've we've taken a lot of good steps towards towards the right directions. Uh, we we've been shooting the puck a lot more, so you know, hopefully here in the near future, we can start capitalizing on some of our chances and uh, be more successful on the man advantage. Well said. Um, so you guys got Charlie got the one of the first goals, and then Reggie Lutz got the second goal in the first period. Second period was no one actually really scored because then Bowling Green scored in the first, I think. So I don't know. It was going back and forth, but a lot of the second period was a little stagnant, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the second fr Saturday's game and Friday's game, you're more alive on Saturday's game in the third period versus Friday night's game. How important is it to come out in that intermission, go into third period, and kind of just give them that? You know, you need to have that power and that energy change. And I kind of like, what was just the difference between Friday's game and Saturday's game? Because, like I said, um, I'll t I'll take the lead here. Yeah, it's like <laughs> tough, tough questions being asked. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I think uh, 
I think we learned from Saturday night's game. I mean, we came out kind of flat in the third on on Friday, and and we knew that it you know came back to haunt us, and and we we took the loss. So Friday, we really wanted to make sure that we empty those tanks in the third period, and uh, you know, Jared Jared Spooner made a great play to come around the net and and get us up three one. And I think uh, from that point on, we just uh, you know took control of the game and, and made sure that we don't give that one away. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, well said. I think. Um, we're we're a veteran group. Um, you don't have to tell us the same thing over and over again. I think you we, you got to go through some adversity too on Friday night. Um, um, obviously, we learned from that. We approached, um, we set the right things in a lot in the intermission after the second period, and um, we handled it pretty well from there. All right. So both nights kind of kind of dipping in Friday and Saturday night, but they're pretty similar games, I would say. When you're going. You know, it was the same score. It was kind of what I was highlighting in the questions. I was like, the first game, you guys came out really strong in the first period, right? Second period. And then in the second period, they kind of crept up on you shots on goal. It happened the Friday and Saturday night's game, which was really similar and really interesting because usually you think maybe the games are going to be different, but it kind of panned out. But obviously, we just highlighted the third period game. But I'm going to talk about penalty kills, really, in this one because both games, you guys do a really great job. Even going back last year, you guys always always have a great penalty kill. And you don't even allow that much, and especially with Bowling Green, who is a, almost 100%, I would say, coming into this series with penalty and power play opportunities. So how did you guys kind of stop them in that penalty kills? Uh, I think f- f- right off the bat, it starts with, with a good um, scouting from, from our coaches. Um, I think we approached that the right way during the week. I think we practiced it really, really well throughout the week. We kind of knew what uh, they were going to do. Um, obviously, the um, the overtime winner on on uh, Friday, um, we came one second too late and uh, lost that game. But... Um, you know, especially um, for me being on the penalty kill, um, I know how frustrating, or I'm playing on the power play, I know how frustrating it is when, when you have guys um, who make it so hard on, on you on the power play. And um, for me and my other penalty killers, is is uh, we really want to yeah, say piss, piss the other guy's power yeah, play off and, exactly. and do it really, really hard to them. Um, I think we take a lot of pride in that um, too. I think since I got to, to Mankato, our penalty mm-hmm. killer was, was always incredibly um, good. Um, and affected, and um, but so we're, we're, it was Bowling Greens on on, on Friday. Um, I think they were just as good as us. It's just one goal difference. Their power play was a little better, and on Saturday our power play was a little better than than their power play. Perfect, Parker. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm not much of a penalty killer. No. So, so, so uh, Matt kind of took that over and <laughs> yeah, said everything. Yeah, yeah. No, I think uh, yeah, just exactly like he said. I mean. Uh, he's a power play guy, and and he knows uh, how frustrating it can get if the penalty kills hard on you. And um, you know, Mark, <clears throat> Mark's been showing that for for his entire career here, how hard he works on the penalty kill, and and he continues to work on it every single day. So you guys work really well as a team on that penalty kill, and I think it shows a lot. Even overall, you guys are meshing well together. We're gonna dip into Saturday now. Kind of the same question I asked. What are your overall thoughts on Saturday's game? Obviously, you're gonna say, "Well, we did better," right? came out really a lot stronger kind of same thing but third period you guys woke up and it was really really fun to see the Mav team that we know so what were your guys' overall thoughts on that um yeah we were just more successful buying in you know what we wanted to do we we wanted to get pucks behind our defensemen and we wanted to play fast and and then on Friday we we finally broke through with that you know Spooner made a great play to get the puck deep and and then he, uh, you know, he he went to work. Uh, he got the puck back, came around the net there, and and just kind of threw it on net. And and that was our mentality. You know, we wanted to get to that goaltender. Um, you know, he had a great weekend uh, before against Tech, even, and, and we knew that was uh, one of their strengths. So um, in the third, we just you know came out and trying to throw more pucks on net and and trying to get to him more, and uh, it paid off. I, th- I think um, was really really uh, important was the start for us. Um, got on the scoreboard right away too, um, and then obviously we gave up a, a shorthanded goal, which which shouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but same lead after the first, like it was on on um, Friday night, and it was kind of disappointing. This um, they kind of took it just the, the same way on Friday. They kind of took it to us on, on, on Saturday too. Um, I think we we haven't really learned from uh, from Friday and that in the second period. I think Coach, uh, yeah, he just addressed that uh, in the locker room as well. I think we have to we have to do a much better job than than we did this past weekend. Um, 
but then like we talked before i think the third period um we took a step from friday and um which kind of resulted in uh, in a win instead of a loss so you mentioned locker room talk and that was actually my next question i'm going to ask about going into from the second period to the third period what was coach's kind of mindset what was his talk in the locker room to get you guys kind of amped up because it just looked like a different team you guys got i mean after that spooner napravnik gerard you guys went bam 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 three unanswered goals in a, in a way so what was kind of that locker room talk <laughs> who wants the question who wants the question uh, no i mean i don't really know there's some a, a lot was said by our leadership group by um by a lot of the guys in the locker room i don't think you really think I remember what what kind of stuck out to me. Um, it was just uh, everybody was aware of 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 the the night before, and, and we wanted to do better. And um, everybody was motivated to go out there and and kind of have an impact on the game. And um, if you have you know tw- twelve forward, thirteen forwards, and six defensemen want to make a difference or want to be the, be the um, kind of what would you say game breaker. Um, we're, you're going to be successful and uh, we had the right mindset because um, everybody kind of chipped in starting in the locker room and then obviously translated to the ice too perfect yeah we knew that um you know it was it was going to take everybody uh that saturday night and and going into the third i think um you know coach coach kept his uh speech fairly simple because um you know we we knew the game plan and, and we just had to apply it and and i think our guys did a great job of just buying into the little things and, and the details and it uh, helped us uh, helped us take care of that game. So, Parker, I'm going to alienate you for a little bit. We're going to talk, probably you know what's coming up here, the 100th career point you had on Saturday. That's awesome. Like, I said, I didn't even know that. you Like, they pointed out, I was like, whoa, that's really impressive. And I just want you to walk me through what that acclimate and, like, what getting over that hill kind of means to you, even in the game and as of now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great, it's a great uh, mark to hit for sure. I mean... Um, I've seen guys like Mark Michaelis and CJ Cease hit that number before, before, uh, before me. So it was uh, it was a great mark to hit. I think um, me and Marcus over here, we've been talking about it ever since the mm-hmm. season started. You know, he wanted me to accomplish that goal as well, and um, you know, fortunate enough, he was on the receiving end of my assist there to him, and, and he put it away in a big time fashion. Um, you know, after the game, I got the puck thrown to me. And uh, and just thinking back on all the moments and, and, and all the years that I've played here, how many good times, how many bad times I went to. And, uh, you know, just to reach that 100-point mark really, uh, you know, really got me to realize how many how many days I've spent here with a special group and, and special players. So it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. That sounds super awesome. I mean, I feel like it would be really hard to get that, especially you got it early in the season, right? We're still pretty early on, so that's – a cool honor and to get it from Mark. I know you guys will go way, way back. So that's su- something that's super cool. We also broke kind of another record, not really another record, but this was the 13th biggest crowd of all time this Saturday with 5,127 crowd fans in attendance. Wow. It was crazy. Like I was going up and doing stuff up top between periods and there was people standing along the sides, like everywhere. It was packed. There was no really seats that available. So what does a crowd like that, having that huge atmosphere, do for you guys? Does it bump up your level, or do you kind of like push it aside and kind of get like tunnel vision in a sense? I think that's that's what you want as uh, as a player. Yeah. Um, you don't want to have any empty seats in in the stadium, and um, obviously, or not even this game. It's it's been pretty much um, improving every year since since I got here, and um, it's it's so much fun playing at home. Is it starts with um, obviously sleeping at home and you, you, the facility we're, we're fortunate enough to have and uh, work out and um, eat uh, and recover in, in, in all these areas they took so much care of us uh, and still do and and think obviously when you come on the ice then and, and it's a packed student section it's a it's a packed crowd and um, you know it's, it doesn't really get any better than that um, and then there's the energy and and uh F- starting Friday night and all the way until till Saturday night and uh, it was a lot of fun playing that's for sure yeah, yeah I'd like uh, I'd also like to give a quick shout out to our uh, Maverick band yeah <laughs> you know, I think uh, they've been you know doing a really good job this season of just you know they're they're one of the first people in the building and and really all hyped up they get for our games is, is pretty cool to see um, you know obviously the crowd Saturday night was uh, was um, 
you know, really engaged and in, in, into the game. So that gives us an extra boost as well and and uh, something that we don't take for granted. You know, I've that's like a couple of comments have come from like people on the podcast before, like Dryden and other people. They just talk about the Maverick machine, how it feels kind of like college. You know, it's a little dim- different atmosphere, and I do think they do a great job. We do this. This is like a little t- talk. It's called B-roll. So if you ever watch highlights of something and you're like, you're talking over it and then it comes your like goals or whatever. We have a lot of B-roll of the band because they get so into it. It's so awesome to see them get into it and hyped. So that's something, yeah, you definitely want from any standpoint, mm-hmm. but to have something like that in a yeah. facility like this, it's just, you guys, it's luck. Yeah. You're very lucky to have it, you know? Yeah, you for sure want to have, have people, uh, you know, especially in the band that are really passionate about hockey and um, when they love the game and, and they love to cheer for us, that even makes it more fun for us as well. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, we're going to go on to the next topic and we're going to do tech preview. So you guys are going to Houghton, Michigan, and going up there. So what is, do you guys fly in there? Do you bus in? What is the kind of things that you do? Because I know when you went down to Alabama, you drove down there and then you actually practice in the Preds practice facility. So, and that's really cool to do and then bus down to Huntsville. So what's kind of your procedure that you take for your second road series? Um, yeah, so uh, we're actually going to... Um kind of spend the the first part of the day tomorrow here in Mankato we're gonna um, do our skate at Civic Center and and prepare for the game there uh, and then we're after after our practice we're gonna hop on a bus and and bus up to Duluth where we're gonna drop our rink off uh, at Amsoil and, and let it dry out there and uh, it just makes it a lot easier if we start the trip on Wednesday we can go halfway up to Duluth and then we uh, get to sleep in there in a hotel our sleep cycle stays the same uh, we go pick up our gear, and then we, uh, you know, complete the uh, travel day to to the, uh, Michigan Tech or Hoot, Michigan, and and then we have another practice there on Thursday, and uh, Friday we we get ready for our game. Perfect. Yeah, I feel like because it's like a what seven is a seven and a half hour drive from oh. there. It's so, it's some <laughs> that's Sorry, really it's, long, guys. Uh, How is it Duluth? It's four to Duluth. Four to Duluth, and yeah. then I think. Three or four to Houghton. Let's just say it's really, really long, okay? (laughs) So you don't want to, like, as hockey players, go that far and have, like, go on Thursday, drive all that way, and then, you know, your legs are going to be stiff. So it's good that you guys, like, have that break in between. I think that's really vital. So um, your record for them, I looked it up online, should be, like, 41, 22, 10. But this is what I found was really interesting, is your record when you go over to Tech is 15 16 and 6 kind of like a 500 record is how is tech playing at because last year i don't know if you guys went there they know they came here for a series and they usually they come here but they they aren't this year how is it playing there is it pretty loud is it a pretty like aggressive place uh, yeah but usually we we went to uh to michigan tech in january and february and uh it gets really cold up there so it starts oh, with oh yeah with, it's it's, it's <laughs> The hotel is, is, is just all right. Um, you know, the weather was, was pretty, pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just a tough environment um, overall. Uh, we're going to see how it is in November now. Um, actually, we, we won both games in Michigan Tech last year. Oh, did you actually? Yeah, winter uh, Carnival. Oh, We played yeah. them in February, yes. We beat them twice. So that's really... I feel like, it, how was that then, beating them, going up to their place? Was that, it a little bit harder? or was it pretty easy for you guys? That was a that was a special weekend, I think, yeah. and, and one that you know, like the one that we will for sure remember. I think because, um, you know, the the building was sold out; every seat was was taken, and uh, they do have a pretty rowdy student section that gets behind them as well. So, uh, a tradition filled program like that, and and you know, they have the entire community around them for the winter carnival. So, uh, it was a pretty special tournament or or trophy to win, and. Like Mark said, uh, we've never been up there in November, but I'm sure it's it's going to be the same type of environment because uh, their their students and their community they're really behind them. Yeah, I remember last year or a couple of years they would bring cowbells to like yeah. when they would play mm-hmm. here at the Civic oh, Center yeah. or just like yell. And whenever we're doing stuff, they are just so loud. So I feel like even at their home place, that's going to be pretty hard to do. But yeah, so what do you guys basically just? overall question what do you guys need to do to come out with a sweep again like you did last year at the winter carnival what do you need to do i mean what strategies do you need to kind of throw into that mix 
uh, learn learn from this past weekend. Yeah. Um, keep the starts and then obviously do a better job in the second period. Um, I think Bowling Green they. Bowling Green didn't really like to, to play in their own zone and, and break out pucks, so so all they did was kind of chipped it off the glass, hope for bounces. While Tech is a more um, um, skilled skilled team, they try to you know break the puck out with actually their puck on the stick and try to make some plays. So I think it's going to be a more up and down um, puck possession uh, kind of game um, instead of just chucking the puck off the glass and, and, and trying yep. to chase. Um, but obviously they have a pretty good team. Um, they just lost to Nodak this past weekend. Uh, and they, I think they, uh, it was a pretty close game, game as well. Um, but I think obviously, um, you want to, we want to focus on us and want to get better and, um, don't, you know, look at them too deep and then and see, yep. see, um, how things are going. It's kind of focus on ourselves and, and trying to take care of business ourselves. Perfect. Parker, what is your view on it? Uh, same exact as Mark. I yeah. mean, uh, you know, as as long as uh, we take care of our of our business and and focus on ourselves, I I think we'll be we'll be able to manage. Um, you know, uh, every team in our league is is a is a hard out, so we we have to make sure that they'll be ready to go and and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna come with their best foot forward. So for us, it's just uh, being ready when that puck drops and and like Mark said, work on our second period so we can. Uh, you know, kind of keep that train rolling. So what have you guys been doing in practice to kind of get ready for this? Like when you have BGSU, Michigan Tech, Bemidji State, is each practice kind of designed for that, for that series, I would say? Like I would think that, you know, you go into like Alabama Huntsville, they're really, you know, they try to be defensive because it's Alabama Huntsville. Mm -hmm. And then BGSU is really aggressive and offensive forward. So how how do you come into this with tech kind of thing? Um, it's actually a good point uh, that you brought that up because, um, you know, we just talked about it today in the locker room, how um, every team is going to bring, you know, a little bit of a different challenge. And, and we don't want to, you know, change our game too much, but uh, we always have to be ready with little nuances that they bring. And and for every team, we have to be able to, to make them feel as uncomfortable as they can. So um, I think every week is designed for our opponent, but also uh, designed on making us better and helping our game to develop. Yeah. Same thing. Right on. Beautiful said, right? Yeah. yeah. You guys are like two peas in a pod. You're like, no, yeah. He, he well, I can walk you through our practice else. plan. No. Yeah. <laughs> so we do this, we get up, we yeah. oatmeal, this is this. Yeah. I mean, practices are practices. Yeah, you have to make the little changes when you have every team, but they pretty much like, I would think would say remotely the same because you don't want any huge changes before you go and have a road series or do anything because I feel like sometimes people don't grasp change really well. So, I mean, you kind of got to stay 100 with everything, yeah. if you will. <laughs> that's my that's my terminology for the day, 100. So, I mean, I want to talk about, like, road series in general. Do they throw this team off a little bit? You need road series, and there's nothing like playing at home. But is it harder for some people to play in a different environment on road series, or is it kind of – what do you guys think? Is it not hard at all? Um – yeah, yeah, I mean it's for sure hard. Yeah, um, going in. Yeah, it's it starts with everything. I mean, it starts with the locker room. Yeah, we, uh, it's. I think it's easier for your upperclassmen. You know, we we You've played at Tech. Russian. Yeah, we played at Tech for twice as freshman year and once as junior. So we've been to Tech three times. I think it's going to be harder for the freshmen if you if you go somewhere where you don't really know. You don't know anything about the hotel. You don't even like the meals. You don't know anything about the rink. Um, you, know, you don't really know what to expect. Um, but for us, we kind of. Uh, kind of know what's going on. I mean, obviously, we, we especially as, as leaders, want to kind of help out the other guys. Just, um, just feeling comfortable and and uh, but it's it's always up. You know, there's certain individuals. Uh, I heard they, you know, some some individuals they only score at home. And, and oh yeah. Kind of hard for them to score in the row, while others just they don't like scoring at home. Uh, it's, it's obviously it's different. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's you can't really uh, tell why it is that way. Yeah. It's Maybe it's just a, a mental thing, but um, every individual is kind of is kind of different there. You kind of look at like Charlie Gerard too when he went to Huntsville, racked up four points on the weekend, and he well, and he did it at home too. He racked up. A yeah, couple of pucks. So I mean, a, it's just kind of like that. Like good you point. don't know. His, his parents were in the stands too. I think for both weekends. Oh, you know? so that has to help. Yeah, yeah. and then for not going in Huntsville, nobody's there, and then he, <laughs> he goes off. So yeah, he, he goes off. I was not expecting that, and a lot of two people like Parker. You had your 
first goal of the season at Huntsville, right? Yeah. Yep. So I and a lot of people like that. You had four different goals at Huntsville, and you just sometimes that's just how that works. Yeah, I think there are some players that you know obviously like scoring in front of their home crowd, so so they get that big cheer. But then, you know, there's also a lot of fun in uh, scoring on the road and and silencing the building. And so there's you know guys that get fired up in different ways, and and uh, you know you need that mix in order to be successful on the road. Perfect. Well, that's all we got for Michigan Tech. We're gonna do now talk about because next week you have Michigan. This week you have Michigan Tech. Next week you guys got to buy. Mm-hmm. And then Alaska Anchorage comes to um, home advantage for you guys. So bye weeks, I feel, are really necessary for you guys. But how much? Like, what do you guys do? Do you guys have practice as normal, and then on the weekends you kind of get that time to relax, chill? Walk me through how bye weeks are for you. Usually, it's it's just kind of a reset. Um, play ten games, or after this weekend we play ten games. Um, expect coming. Uh, coming to the rink next week, I'm pretty sure we're going to have individual meetings, how the start went, um, you know, with coach, with, with all the coaches and, um, you know, moving forward, what I got to do and then um, to be more successful, or help the team out um, better. And then um, the, the, when we don't play, usually we have more um, more uh, more skilled practices, you know, going back to the basics. Um mm-hmm kind of because you don't really have time we leave tomorrow for Michigan Tech there's not much time for um you know kind of getting better as a as a player because you want to prepare for for Michigan Tech you got to do and yep. you know kind of like the rhythm um so we use this week to kind of go back and, and reset and um you know being the player we uh when you come on this summer um and, yeah. <laughs> and start going to the <laughs> basics again like yeah. I said yeah Work on your dangles. Yeah, work on your yeah. dangles. Ooh, yeah, I feel like it's important, especially for you to get that reset, because you guys just go, 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 right? It's very much hard on you, and now you got to go to Hooten, which is, a, you know, difficult, and you've already been to, like, Bama, and mm-hmm. a lot of that, and have home series that have been difficult. Like, the home series here haven't been, like, a super breeze. Not any game is going to be. But how do you guys spend your free time when you get it? I mean, we talked about this a little... And you know when we were on here, right? Yeah. Yeah, Talking about that. the pool yeah. and the golfing, but yeah. all those two are gone now. So what do you guys kind of do? You want to do any bonding like stuff, like maybe escape room or anything? Or uh, escape room, we've never done, but um, oh, it's fun. Yeah, I know. We we <laughs> got to get that going at some point. Um, no, I yeah, I mean we we try to bond. I think as much as possible, especially in those weeks. Um, you know, whether it be bowling or. Or you know, just just meeting up for a movie, or or going to the mall together and and picking out some new clothes. I mean, I think <laughs> <laughs> the pool, think, the tan, uh, the clothes. Unfortunately, I love it. not anymore. But <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I think you know each guy has kind of their own routine in that off week, and you know, for some guys, it might be catching up on schoolwork or just getting some more sleep. <laughs> School. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so like like I said, it's just different for every guy. Yep. Oh, school. <laughs> I feel like I feel like it would just be hard, everything that you're doing now. Do you guys bring, like, when you go on, like, the road? This is a question out of it, but I'm just curious. Do you guys bring, like, a lot of homework on the road? Do you do that when you go on the buses? Or some more than others. Some more than others? <laughs> it's like, I sh- probably yeah, should be doing this, point. but... Um, actually, to be, to be quite honest with you, I get more stuff done when I'm on the road. Oh, really? In a hotel, yeah. yes, because... Um, obviously living with Parker and, and then Nikki, there are a lot of distractions. <laughs> <laughs> so, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. So actually, no, I, I try to take advantage of that. Even when you're on the bus, um, you know, trying to get some, some simple stuff done that's kind of time um, intense. Um, but no, f- for for me, I don't know how about Parker. I've never seen him uh, bring, <laughs> I didn't know he brings his, no. no what is uh, homework? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, no I, tr- I try to get my stuff done before and uh, not worry too much about uh, school work when I'm on the road but uh, you know I mean there, there's there been an occasional paper or discussion post that I had to write obviously but I tried to keep it as limited as possible yeah I feel like doing like if you're gonna write a paper or like read a book or something on the road that's so hard to do Cause especially if it's like night out like you try and turn your light on do your stuff or like it's bumpy you can't like write yeah. you can never take notes or do that and like oh yeah when we go up to Duluth I tried it like for me I tried to bring it and then I'm like no I don't want to do this yeah, like I gotta yeah. meet tomorrow yeah. I don't want to do stuff but that's being a student athlete yeah so I mean do you guys like bye weeks I know obviously hockey players any athletes gonna like 
games you're gonna want to play as much games as possible but do you like that opportunity to just kind of like you said like mark said just like reset relax or are you like itching to get back on the get back on the circuit it's uh, i would say it's a little it's a little weird um you play 10 games and you we, we have a couple guys banged up and so we need that break and everybody needs that break kind of but um, once that week can hit and you sit at home uh, and everybody else is playing in the country that's when you kind of itching to play again yeah um so yeah as soon as the weekend is over after that you, you kind of um you know like i said all reset and then ready to play and, and itching to play um but we need that break and and we you know uh, we can't be playing from beginning of october on to, all the way until to christmas um every weekend uh, without a buy so um, playing five weekends in a row, get the bye, and then play another four um, is really important that we get that break for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable too if you if you go into that bye week with two wins. So yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, you know, it's it's another it's another uh, motivation for us to to do as well as we can because we know that we're not going to be able to prove ourselves the weekend after. So we want to make sure that we. Um, do everything we can to take care of business and then we can really enjoy that off week and make sure that you know like mark said guys are healthy and and we're we're really ready to hit that reset button so healthy kind of thing this is the last question i'm gonna ask um do you guys deal with a lot of injuries right and how like when you get a puck to like you're like lagging all you guys like your breezers on or anything like that probably has to hurt really bad do you guys get really banged up in those times like in those 10 games like, is it super bad? Because I know I was interviewing Nick, and he was, like, walking off. It looked like he kind of hurt himself before the interview. I was like, are you okay? I'll probably like, talk to the right guy then. Right? <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know. I mean, like, in track, I get, like, shin splints, like, super duper bad. Like, because I'm mm-hmm. a jumper, I can't, like, can't walk. I got to wear special shin sleeves. But this is the same thing. Like, my, ser- my is, like, November to May, right? And yours is super long, too. You guys start super duper early and super late. So I feel like... Is it a hard? Is it hard in your bodies? It's kind of what I'm asking, being yeah. around the bush. No, for sure it is, um, especially in, in college hockey where we only play uh, uh, 36 games and then every game is so important, um, especially when you, you when you look at ourselves, we, we won the regular season championship, the playoff championship, and then we go um, play like, like Tech right now um, and they know, you know how successful we were in the past. We have the same team coming back, so they're going to bring their A game. Um, they're mm-hmm. going to be really hard yep. on us, just like Bowling Green was last weekend. And if you have to go through that every every single weekend, it wears on you too, and um, you know bangs you up. So um, yeah, uh, especially in college, I feel like it's uh, uh, you know you got different guys getting hurt every yeah. weekend. Yeah. And then you bring in like illnesses with it, and it's just a recipe, a little bit of a recipe for disaster. Yeah. But especially like every time, like I'm right, you guys, I'm right on the like on the sides, and I see you guys just like get checked i'm like holy crap i would think that would hurt but i've never been in hockey i just watch it so i really don't know (laughs) but we're gonna that is enough with the bye week talk we're gonna go and do like you know you guys have already done maverick q a so i don't want to ask you the same questions right because that gets a little so we're gonna do something a little bit more fun that's gonna be would you rather questions i got a couple of those so we're gonna get those loose and then we'll get you out all right so let's go for it would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? I can't even read right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. So, so no brainer. Easy, easy one for me. <laughs> yep, speak. Next question. <laughs> yeah, I'd go with the same thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. I feel like because it's like kind of no brainer. Like, why, how would like speak? Like, you'd have to le- like learn sign language mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. Which isn't the worst, but easy. So, would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? I don't even know what either of those are. Like, like an animal, right? Like would you rather be like a snake or would you rather be like a, a deer or something, you know? Oh, it's a, that's a tough question. It's, a, it's a weird. I, it's weird. I, I think I'd, I'd rather take the fur. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd rather be the fur. <laughs> right? I don't like being cold. Because you'd be so. warm. Like, you'd yeah. be warm for the winter. You really have to put anything on. Yeah. Versus like a snake because it's always like you're always peeling. <laughs> Sure, I'll, I'll right? that <laughs> I have um I kind of would probably do the scales. I'm already like that. I have like eczema in my hands, so you get really bad like dry skin and yeah. it like peels and stuff. It's disgusting. So I already feel like I'm doing that. You already have them. <laughs> I already have the scales, guys. It's not good. So I'm gonna do would you rather always be ten minutes late or always be twenty minutes early? Always early. 
early always early yeah. oh yeah if you're not early you're late so that's true yeah i'd I've, rather be early i am i hate to say this i'm a late person i always <laughs> arrive to class like two minutes late with like coffee in my hand and food <laughs> right i'm always that type of person that's not good but i'm gonna do so would you rather know the history of every object you have touched or would you rather be able to talk to animals Rob much rather talk to animals. To animals, yeah, yeah, for sure. Especially, I, I got a dog. He's he's um, fourteen, fifteen years old, and he's um, really old. And um, yeah, I don't even. Th- yeah, <laughs> yeah, he for sure has, and um, we never really had a good relationship. And I would ask him why that why is. Why do you hate me? <laughs> yeah, why seriously? do you always bite me when I come up and like try to pet you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I would love to talk to animals too. And just see how the birds are doing. Yeah. <laughs> and everything, you know, it would be pretty cool. I feel like the animals <laughs> thing is a little no-brainer. I would do the same thing. Because, like, like, right, I touch this, like, bobblehead. I'm like, oh, this has been sitting in Greg's office for, like, three years. Like, it hasn't done anything. <laughs> Why would I want to know that? <laughs> so, we got two more questions. Would you always, Would you rather have traffic lights turn green when you approach them every single time or never have to stand in line again. Wow. Yeah, hard hitting questions here. Yeah, I looked these up on the internet. I just scrolled through. I was like, "Oh, this <laughs> one's nice." I feel like I would personally. I hate like approaching lights and they're not like green. I would rather have that one because there's like a light out here, and I've sat there for like minutes. Like I said, I'm late to class. So like I'm like <laughs> sitting there, it's been like two minutes, I'm like, oh no, like I've already missed so much. So I feel like that's definitely yeah. one I would go for. I feel like they're both the same kind. It's just yeah. you like yeah, more like, being standing in the like, car. Yeah. So you're sitting so I'd much rather go in the car then I guess. It's literally just preference. Like so yeah. green like, light? You would, you'd always want the green you'd light? You'd always want the green light? What no, think? standing. So Standing? Because oh. I'm sitting down in the oh. car. Oh, you're yeah. already sitting, yeah. so you'd rather. Oh yeah, rather yeah, yeah that no makes lines. sense. You kind of got to put that into it, especially if you're like, it's like Black Friday shopping. I never do that, but like, or like it's a really long line and you're like, okay. There's been a lot of times I've just put stuff back and walked out. Yeah. I like, could definitely True. do that. Yeah, I, w- I would skip the line too then. Mm-hmm. All right, last question. So would you rather have unlimited international first class tickets or never have to pay for food at a restaurant again? Hmm. So basically, would you rather go anywhere in the world for free or would you rather always eat for free? I feel like it's kind of easy for us Germans. Oh, you'd always get to go back home, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'd pretty much fly home. First class, too. and first yeah. class. Yeah, I'd fly. I'd fly every day, maybe. Oh yeah. man, first class. Yeah, coach and uh, the program are taking pretty good care of the meals, so we don't have to spend much money in, in restaurants. Yeah. So uh, now you already go got that flights. one. Oh, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. How long is it from Germany to the U.S. Uh, like flight-wise? Around a ten-hour trip. Okay. So um, usually, uh, it's it's. It's with the layover. No, it's with the uh, the Gulf with the Airstream. It's oh, like yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, fly, yeah. you come to America. It's only like n- it's nine hours. Oh really? It's nine hours and like fifteen twenty minutes, and going yeah. back, it's like seven hours fifty. So it's like an hour difference. Oh okay. Going back and forth. Yeah. yeah, I definitely. I went to like Paris once, and we flew, and we had to stop so many places. We stopped at Vancouver, and we stopped at Iceland, Reykjavik, and then we went to Paris. And then we did, so it literally did the same thing. Mm. Like we, it was like, it was horrible. So that was like 13 hours. Yeah. So I'd probably, I'd probably do the same thing. Long trips. Long, th- horrible. I think like Mark a, and I are in the, on the same trip home for Christmas though. So that helps a are lot. Are you guys? We, yeah, yeah. So is oh, Julian that's super too. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Julian. Yeah. yeah. So we're all Get a podcast in here. Should I Julian have the Germans? <laughs> Let you guys Three just talk pirates. German the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Greg, talk, Greg, yeah. our like the producer guy talks, like speaks yeah. German. So oh, he's he like does. been like, yeah, allow me on this. Get the Germans. We'll just talk German the entire time. <laughs> no one's going to know what you guys are saying. Like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that is all we have for today's episode of Maverick Hockey Live podcast. Thank you guys for coming in. Good luck versus Michigan Tech. Thanks. You guys can listen to um, next week's podcast. We don't know what we're going to do for the bye. We may actually pull in PA and your Scotty, your assistant manager, and let them go off. I don't know. We might have to tell some jokes or whatever so it'll be it's gonna be interesting so you guys want to listen in as always apple and spotify but all right thanks for listening in and we'll see you guys and talk to you guys real soon bye